Neither plan produced results. He suspected there was no noise to hear. After all, he thought exasperatedly, I cannot make the hinges squeak, even if I stay awake all night. It is simply that Gebu is not going out. He had mentioned nothing of his nocturnal fiasco to Hecate or the ancient, and now he was glad, very glad. It was enough to endure his own humiliating knowledge that if he had started after Gebu sooner, or pursue, pursued him faster, or been braver, all the mystery might have been unraveled now. A fine spy I have turned out to be, Ranifer told himself. I am as great as a bumbler, a gr as great a bumbler as I am a coward. The ancient was right. I would be better occupied in learning the stonecutter's trade as well as I can. It is at least a way to earn my bread when I am a man, and no doubt I shall never be a goldsmith. Smothering the rage of protest that rose in him in spite of all reason, he set himself drearily to improving his skill at stonework, observing the methods of the craftsman, trying to understand the running of the shop. When Pi sent him one morning to the scroll room and told him to set the shelves in order, he studied the drawings as he worked, noting the design for a further temple addition, comparing the plans for a royal shrine or two, and marking the variations in several tombs. One of these latter drawings contained a detail he found in none of the others, either a truncated passage or a small room in a location which seemed either senseless or mistaken. He puzzled over it a while, forcing himself to think of possible explanations. In spite of his usual boredom and utter lack of interest in what its purpose might be, none of the explanations fit, and he threw the scroll aside impatiently. A moment later he picked it up. He was a stonecutter's apprentice, and, Tedious though it might be, he had resolved to learn his trade. He carried the scroll into the shop and looked around for Pi. Instead, he saw Gebu, just straightening from his inspection of the finisher's progress on a limestone slab. Well, well, Gebu grunted. What do you want? Why are you standing there? I want to ask a question of Pi about this scroll. Ask it, then, of me. I am the master here. Wishing he had thrown the scroll in the Nile, Ranifer silently unrolled it and pointed to the little chamber. This room, I do not understand its purpose. Instead of an answer, he got a blow on the head that sent him sprawling on the gritty floor. Impudent mongrel! Gebu flung the words at him like stones. Why should you understand it? You'll do what you're told here and nothing more. Do you understand me? He leaned down, snatched the scroll from Ranifer's hand, and thrust it into the folds of his sash. His face was contorted with rage. Ranifer had seldom seen him look more vicious. Dazed by the blow and the completely unexpected reaction he had provoked, Ranifer could only stare. Up with you, Gebu snapped digging the copper-sheathed toe of his sandal into the boy's ribs. Back to work, and keep your questions to yourself hereafter. 